Welcome to Anne Arundel County's Real Talk. I'm your host, Derek Matthews. In this episode, we'll get an update on a few special projects that we've been working on here in Anne Arundel County since the last time we chatted. We're here with our guest today, Mark T. Mark, help me out. Secreta. Secreta, who is a adventure therapist uh, at the Pathways. And um, I had the opportunity last week of coming in, spending like a half a day. Mark, welcome. And Thank I you. promised you we were going to get together this week and have some real talk. So um, welcome to the show. And Mark, I'm really excited about talking about what I experienced last week. But I want to take a deeper dive and get folks to understand what happens at Pathways. But first, let's start with who you are, where you're from, um, you know, how long you've been at Pathways. Just give me a little overview of letting the folks know who Mark is. Uh, Texas born, Yankee raised, okay. moved up here from South Carolina after I'd graduated from graduate school. Okay. Applied at Pathways and was hired as the original admissions counselor okay. a little over 27 years ago. Wow. Then about a year after that, was fortunate enough to go through the facilitator training okay. for the adventure therapy program. Okay. Nine months after that, I was offered the position. Okay. And Life has changed so dramatically for oh, me based man. on that. Um, mm -hmm. I have not looked back because so many doors have opened for me that are just sure. fantastic and experiences that 35 years ago, if you'd have told me I would have done half of it, you I would have never no. no. I no. can tell that not only your love and passion for what you do, um, I could see the love and passion for the clientele that was coming in. So having said that, what are some of the services that are offered at Pathways for recover, people that are recovering from addiction? We try to be as broad brush and offer as many uh, services as possible. Spirituality, gender groups, art therapy, music therapy, adventure therapy. We also provide intensive outpatient and traditional outpatient treatment yeah. services to the community. Um, to keep, you know, our schedule as, f as full and, you know, our patients as busy as possible because due to the short period of time that most of them sure. are there. Sure. So because most folks are, you know, perceive traditional treatment as the 28 days. Right, right. It's, you know, a person could be in treatment for five days, five weeks, five months, or five years. Right and still can walk out and sure. pick up and start using immediately afterwards, sure. unfortunately. Sure. So I was able to kind of get an overview of the art pieces, and I know you mentioned the spirituality piece, but what really kind of got me filled, if you will, was the adventure therapy part. When we, I know what I could just recall, you know, it seemed like it was yesterday, but I remember walking down the hall into the gym and seeing all the, the rock climbing stuff and then this contraption hanging from the ceiling. And I was trying to figure out, okay, what are we about to do? And how is this about to connect? So let's talk a little bit about adventure therapy and why we go with what we call adventure therapy. Adventure therapy is a, is a part of our treatment milieu that instead of our patients being lectured to, handouts, yep. PowerPoints, it involves our patients and gives them the opportunity to have hands-on experiences and challenges that get them to start thinking. It's about, you know, as most folks would look at it as team building, yep. uh, communication enhancement, trust building, helping an individual to learn that he or she can do more than what he or she realizes sure or more importantly, will allow themselves to do up in yes. up here. And that was the kicker for me. And when you see people step out of their comfort zone, yeah. because in the recovery process, you know, it's about, you know, persons stepping out of, because being an addict or an alcoholic, we're comfortable with what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And this requires us and teaches us how to step out of that comfort zone, yeah. to learn how to do things in a completely different way, mm. to look at things differently, to face the challenges that everyday life has to offer and understand that if I can do this through this program, mm -hmm. I'm able to face whatever life throws my way because right. now 
I have the support of others. I know how to use that support that is provided, you know, for me, and it's free. Right. All right, we're going to take a quick break, ladies and gentlemen. But what I want to do right now is let you know what we're about to show you is some of the activities as far as the adventure therapy piece that we've been talking to that happens at Pathways. You're going to be very excited about what you see. Take a quick look. I've had folks that they're more afraid to come here into the woods because they think it's dangerous because what's normal for them are, you know, drive-by shootings, dope deals going down on just about every corner. This is strange to them. This is dangerous to them. I see people that are more afraid of bugs, but, you know, shooting heroin or drinking massive amounts of alcohol, that's, you know, that's second nature. I'm Mark Secreta. I'm the Adventure Therapy Coordinator here at Pathways. My job is to take you out of your comfort zone. And I think I do a pretty good job of that. But at the same time, it's teaching them that they, they can do more than what they allow themselves to do up here. Adventure Therapy is a nice little special term used to describe what's basically known as experiential education. It's a way of getting our patients out of a normal group room, classroom, closed environment setting, and giving them something totally different to learn by. And adventure therapy is exactly that. It's involving you know, our patients here at Pathways in hands-on activities and challenges that teach them how, here's where you start, here's where you want to get to just pushing people just enough to get them to step through that, that fear, that lack of confidence. But it's a matter of taking them to a place that they never thought that they would be able to go to. But when they come back down and after they've done something that they never thought that they could do, they're like, thank you for not letting me do what I wanted to do. Everything's about how it correlates to the real life situation of how do I stay sober? How do I deal with challenges? How do I deal with problems? If things that I'm doing don't work for me, what is it that I need to do to change this? How do I change my attitudes, my behaviors, my way of dealing with things? There are a lot of folks that have come through here that when they leave here, I may never know what impact adventure therapy had on them. Most folks, you know, they're either just gonna tell me, thank you, Mark, you're never gonna see me here again. And I hope that I don't. At the moment that everything is happening, I'm more concerned that, you know, that they get something out of that experience of what they're going through at that time. Those impacts may come, you know, weeks, months, or even years later, and when they do come in and say thank you that they got a lot out of it, then, you know, I can be appreciative of what we do out here every day, and that when somebody's life gets better because what they got out of what they did here, you can't buy that. So just so they have clarity, <clears throat> so we climbed in partners, so the teamwork aspect was there, but then when I asked you afterwards, there were three people on belay or basically tethered to the rope, and you made this awesome connection that that was symbolic of knowing that there were other people to support. You kind of brought all of that together with this one exercise. Can you kind of just explain that piece a little bit more about the community or folks being tethered to you and you never being by yourself? In the recovery community, there are so many folks out there that the concept of one addict helping another addict, one alcoholic helping another alcoholic yeah. is without parallel. Yeah. And teaching our patients that their biggest support is going to come from other people who've mm. been down the same road that they've been yes. on. Yes. And understanding that, you know, I can learn how to trust another person yes. in recovery to help me to make it to where I'm trying to get to mm. in life. And it's interesting is that when I take folks out 
onto the adventure therapy course mm -hmm. and they're asking me, is this safe? Mm -hmm. And I'll ask, you know, okay, well, what's your drug of choice? And I'll say, oh, heroin's my drug of choice. And I'll say, and every time you go cop dope, do you ask the dope man, is this USFDA mm. approved? Right, right. If I take this, will it kill me? Right. You know, we're not thinking about those consequences. Sure. And so now it's getting people to step out of that comfort yeah. zone and to do something that is so unnatural to them. Yeah. You know, how, how is this gonna teach me how to get sober? Yeah. First, we got to step through that fear. I got to learn how to trust these other people yeah, that are yeah. just like me going through wow. the same thing that I'm wow. going through. And until we can learn how to trust ourselves that, okay, okay, I got to, I got to trust all these other people. I don't know if I can do that. Mm. Okay. I got to trust this guy. He says it's all safe. All right. So, and then after folks do it, they're coming down or whatever off of a certain high element activity. And you get some folks, you ask them to put their hands out and they're going like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're just like, that was awesome. Mm -hmm. I some of my classmates borderline there because there was a part where we were blindfolded and you had to rely on the voice of another person while you were 30, 40 feet in the air. And that was all interesting. Trust is, trust is one of those things that where you can't see it. You can't right. feel it, touch it, grasp right. it. So how do you know that that trust is there? Right. And it's just like, you know, as you described the indoor rock climbing yeah. wall, um, when I have my clients to, you know, to climb that, I have them blindfolded. Mm. And I have another, you know, client on the ground standing there giving them directions, telling them where to put their hands and to right, put their right. feet to allow them to teach them how to, you know, to take my time, sure. listen to the directions, and I have to put my trust sure. fully into this person. Sure because I can't see exactly what it is wow. that they're trying to tell me what to do wow. here. So, but yeah. it's a lot of fun. Okay. I enjoyed it. And listen, I could sit here and talk to you all day. I'm actually getting filled, just kind of processing the connection to reality versus working with people with addiction because we have so many uh, pieces of our population going through it, whether it being Reentry, whether it being being a veteran, whether it being a accumulation of things that we deal with, but you guys at Pathways are doing some cutting edge stuff with relation to addiction, and I absolutely love what you do for it, man. So listen, I promise you, I'm going to get you back. We're going to dive a little bit deeper into some other things that you guys do, but that's got to wrap it up for this edition. But I promise I'll get you back. Right. Awesome. Look forward to it. Look forward to it. Thank you. All right, folks, I promise you we had a good one today. That wraps up this week's edition of Real Talk. You can watch this episode and archive episodes online anytime on Arundel TV's main page, Facebook, YouTube, or just simply search on Arundel TV Real Talk. Please tune in next time for more highlights around news around the county. Next time we'll be discussing some other things going on to include gun violence and some other things here in Anne Arundel County. Thank you, and until next time, I'm your host, Derek Matthews, and this is Real Talk.